Welcome, I am the Clay Golem and this is our Foundry VTT uh, introductory series where we work through together um, in creating uh, adventures and campaign material in version 11 of Foundry. Um, we're doing a Dungeons and Dragons campaign and in this series we're looking specifically at the introductory module available from uh, D&D Beyond Storm Wreck Isle, not Shipwreck Isle. Um, okay, so first of all we're going to log in. Still have not created a password for us yet. Uh, in the previous sessions we have created two different areas. We created our starting uh, map. If you have missed that one, go back and watch the first video um, and uh, you'll find out where we are and what we're doing. And in our last video we created the Seagro Caves, we aligned the grid, we put in some um, notes and things for us as the DM when we're running the game so that we can uh, see what's going on and know what's in each of these locations. So the larder, the fungus farm, the entrance tunnel, etc. At the end of the last video I said we were going to move on and do the basics for a couple of the other areas so like the observatory um, and then I remembered that we need to put walls in okay so we need to put some walls in here to stop our characters from moving inappropriately. What I want to do in this video then is yes I want to look at walls but first of all I want to create our very first actor so our very first um, uh, character if you like so that we can have a little explore and a look around this map and see how that is going to work for our characters uh, and then when we put the walls in we can check to make sure those walls are working as expected. So here we are at Seagro Caves. It doesn't matter which scene we're in when we're creating our actors because our actors can be present in uh, as many scenes as we want. And of course, when we're talking about player characters, hopefully at some point they're going to appear in every scene um, at, you know, as they work their way through the adventure. So at the top right here, uh, I'm going to click uh, this little person figure that says Actors. Uh, and we haven't created any. We haven't got any at all yet. Now we have the Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition module installed. Uh, the, sorry, the game mechanics installed. So when we create an actor, if we create a player character, it's going to default to uh, a D&D character sheet. Uh, which is really useful because we, we don't have an awful lot of stuff to, to change on that. There absolutely is a way to import your player characters directly from D&D Beyond. Uh, that's in an add-on, and we'll have a look at that further down the line. Right now, all we're really interested in is getting something on the board so that we can check out what things look like. So I'm going to go to Create Actor, and it's going to give us this little box here that tells us to give a... We can give it a name. Let's just call it Test. And we can decide whether this is a player character, a non-player character, so an NPC, uh, a vehicle, or a group. Now, monsters cons are considered non-player characters. So we're pretty much only going to be using, they're either going to be player characters or non-player characters. Let's create a player character to start with and click Create Actor. And as you can see, immediately it brings up a D&D-esque uh, character sheet. Uh, we've got their attributes down the side here, all of their various skills, but you'll notice it's blank. They don't have a race, they don't have uh, backgrounds, hit points or anything like that. Because the way that Foundry works is if we don't import this from somewhere else, we will go through and we can make all the adjustments we need to. So, for example, um, I can change any of these things, configure their hit points, etc. through here. Um, and there's ways to add on um, various attributes and stuff for the, your class, your race, um, your level, etc. Um, we don't need a lot of that stuff for our purposes because this is just something to walk around and look. Um, but we do have a movement section here. So I am going to configure movement and give them a movement speed. So I'm going to give them 30 and you can see we've got the units here. It automatically defaults to feet. So we now have a movement of 30. So we can see how that works when we're moving around the map and we try to move further than we can in one round uh, and what that will tell us. Um, we've got our inventory. We don't need any equipment here. We've got our features, uh, spellbook, uh, effects and our biography. So everything you would expect to find on a normal character sheet. Um, now we've got senses here. If I if I click on senses, this is going to talk about ah this is so this is whether you've got things like blind sight, dark vision, etc., um, and whether we've got it. Let's assume we're going to be running around with a human, 
uh, with no special site. So we'll leave that as is. Okay, I'm going to close that. What we can see under our actors up here now is we've got our character with a test uh, with a default icon. We haven't given it a picture or anything like that, but we could do so. Now, any of these actors we can drag and drop straight onto our playing area. I think because that's really pale and it probably doesn't show up particularly well on the video, I think what we're going to do is we are going to... Um, I want to uh, I'll configure ownership, but I don't want to configure ownership. Ah, double left click. There we go. Let's see if we can let's see if we can find uh, and add onto it a uh, a picture of some description. Um, where's an easy place going to find one? Whoops, a daisy. Just clicking all over the place. I don't want to be in there. Uh, okay, let me choose. Let me choose a file because I have uh, already got some NPCs in here. Let's pick this one. Okay, and let's just run with uh, Elder Renara, who's actually going to be one of the NPCs in this. So now we've got a picture. Um, I can close that and we can see at the top here, test, we now have an image. Now it hasn't updated the icon on here. Um, so we can delete that icon and dr just drag this back on. So there we go, we've got a, a clearer icon. Now you notice it's immediately gone black. Because we have this character selected and we have not set up any vision and we've not set up any light, it is basically saying this character can see nothing. And if we've got a human in a very dark cave, we would expect them to see nothing. So this is good. Our problem is that we can move this character anywhere we like um, in pitch blackness. Uh, if we uh, just click off of that, we've managed to move them into the middle of rocks. This is why we need to put walls in, is so that they can't do that. Um, oops, Daisy, don't want to add that. Let's just move her back over here. Uh, and we want to come out of this. So there's a couple of things that we can do regarding lighting. So if I uh, select this character uh, and I can go to configure and I can set up something. So what I did was just left click to select the character, right click to bring up this menu which allows me to hide them, to set status effects, to toggle them when they're in combat. Um, I think that's to ping them, I th oh, that's to target them as part of combat. But importantly, this cog here allows me to set some different things. So I can rename the token here. Um, I can um, choose when the name pops up. So anybody hovers over this icon, her name will pop up. We'll know who it is. Um, I can set whether this is a friendly, hostile, or anything else if I wanted to. But I can also change things like appearance. So I can change the icon from here. I can make them bigger. And smaller um, however I want to do that I can make them more than one grid size if I wanted to for whatever reason um, and I can tint the color etc as you can see there but importantly there's a vision tab here and this is where I can set whether that vision is enabled so if I turn that vision off for this icon you can see we can see the whole map okay purpose of us testing this is we want to see what this person sees so we want to leave that on what is their vision? How far can they see without any light at all? The answer is zero, just like uh, you. <laughs> if it's pitch black, you can't see anything at all. Um, we can set the vision angle. So can they see in all directions, as in turning their head and things, or are they locked in? Now, you might want to have, you know, a, a, I don't know, if a player's playing a particular race, a type of golem or something like that, you might want to restrict their ability to easily turn and see. Um, not sure, but I'm sure there are cases where uh, a DM might want to use that, but we don't need to. We can set here their vision. Um, we can give them dark vision, monochromatic, um, tremor sense, light amplification, but we want to stick with basic vision. We can also look at detection modes. Um, as you can see, it's got basic sight and things. Not really sure what those are. Don't need to play with those. Uh, and we've got some advanced options here that we can look at as well to affect brightness. So we've got the right vision. Um, and at the moment, they're not shedding any light. So we can use this if we wanted to, to simulate this character holding a torch. We could do it this way. So we could say that actually a torch has a total of 20 foot dim light. 
and 10 foot of that is bright. So the first 10 foot is bright light closest to the torch and then out to 20 foot is dim light. Um, and as you can see straight away this is updated to say that this character uh, can see um, in a circle around them. So that's really good. We can also look at light animations if we want to. Um, we can make it a flickering light um, and there's one actually I think there was one thought I saw one for torch at some point. I'll leave it as flickering light for that um, and we can change some options if we want to. Uh, how luminous it is um, etc. Okay so if we update that token and we move that token around we can see that the light follows this token because the token is producing the light and you can see that this fog of war is graying out the bits of the map that we've been to um, we know what's there but we can't see it right now so that's really useful but of course we've still got this problem of being able to walk straight into solid rock so we'll need to fix that um, I've just popped it right over top of the icon just to make it particularly challenging for myself Yep, excellent. I've got myself stuck. Just give me a moment. That's interesting because I'm in at the D in as the DM controlling the character. It um, I can see all these icons. We hid them from players. So what we will do later on, before we go to run this module, we will log in with one of our characters as a player to make sure exactly what the player would see, rather than having this mix of the DM and character view that we've got right now. So we want to make sure that that's going to work. Okay, so um, we need to put walls in. And in these caves, uh, very conveniently, very friendly for new players, it tells us that we have some light sources from a lot of this fungus and that the entire caverns are dimly lit. So we can put some lights in and we can put some walls in. So um, let's start off by putting a few lights in. We're not going to do all of them right now, but we can certainly make a start. I can click on this light bulb, lighting controls, and we've already got selected this draw light source. So because this light is emanating from fungus, we've got a couple of ways we can do that. If I click and hold the left mouse button, I can draw, and hopefully you can see that this is drawing a radius. So this is how far the light is going to shine from that. So you could put, you know, a torch light's going to be from that. Magical light might be from this. There's a huge bonfire. Um, whatever it might be, you can change that range. And you can edit that by to a specific number as well. Um, because the whole cavern is supposed to be dimly lit and glow, what I'm actually going to do is make this really quite big. I'm going to move it slightly more central. Now, bearing in mind the players will not see the, this icon here. They won't see the icon. They will just see the effects. So what we can see is the effect of this light is going to encompass the entrance and into these parts of the caves here. So all of this area in the middle is going to be lit by this source. Uh, if I double left click, we can start to configure this. So as I said, we can manually type in exactly what the radius is for the dim and for the bright. Now they've asked us to, or they said in the module that this is dimly lit. So I'm going to remove brightness. So it's not going to have a bright center followed by dimly lit everywhere else. It's going to have no bright. It's going to be all just dim. Um, and I might change that to 60 just for a nice even number there. All right, so uh, again, just like with the vision, where instead of having 360 degrees, so all the way around, if we wanted to, if I just slide this down, uh, you can see this now creates a half crescent, not quite half crescent, it's not 180 degrees, but I can angle this lighting. So if I wanted to have light shining like a bullseye lantern, shining only in one direction like a you know, like a, a modern day battery operated torch, I could have it as a beam in one particular direction. We don't want to do that in this instance. We want to have um, this full range. So we're going to put that up, uh, leave that up as uh, 360 degrees. We can also change the color of this lighting rather than its default. So because this is a dim glow in these caverns, um, <coughs> excuse me, I'm going to leave it as it is for the moment. We can change the intensity of it. So we'll have a look and see what it looks like first before we do that. 
Um, so let's click on that. Let's look at our character now. Uh, this looks pretty bright. This doesn't look like dim light. What I am going to do is just edit the character again to get rid of the character's own light source. Okay, so now we're we're just working on the dungeon light source here, uh, and of course, if we go outside of that area, um, the light does not follow us anymore. So we've got this nice big radius of light that's caused by this, but to my mind, that looks far too bright for for what we want. So can I reduce the? That's the intensity of it. Um, looking under light animations, we potentially can change the way this looks. What's fairy light look like? Let's. Uh, is that going to give us? Yeah, that's not really having much effect. So this is going to be just a case of like playing with these light effects to see what's actually um, going to work for us. And I suspect that's to do with the intensity and things. So let's change the light color. Um, let's make it a sort of a perhaps a pale green. Oh, that's suddenly look now we've given it a specific color. Um, that seems a little bit vibrant, doesn't it? Yeah, that's a that's a little bit a uh, little bit over the top, a little bit too bright. It's not necessarily the effect is wrong. Uh, we're talking about luminous luminescent fungi here. Um, there's no reason that that would be one particular color, but this looks slightly too much like a disco. <laughs> so maybe we can change with a couple of things here. We can turn down the intensity of that light. Perhaps that might be a good thing. Uh, and again, it's just a case of kind of sort of playing with this. It's nowhere near as bright anymore. We can still see perfectly well, um, but it's not quite such a disco, which is good. <laughs> we don't want to disco. Uh, opening this up again, what else might we want to be change on here? Um, the light animation. So what we might do is slow down the animation speed. Yeah, look at that. That's much, that's much more kind of eerie and atmospheric, isn't it? Now I, I've only looked at fairy light. Maybe there's a, maybe there's a difference here. We can turn down the animation intensity as well. Maybe a little too subtle. If we turn it right up, we can see. Yeah, that's quite intense. So let's keep that quite low. Um, so fairy lights looks good. Uh, chroma. I'm going to have to turn the animation speed up again to see that. That's just kind of phasing through the different colors, which is good. Um, so at the moment, fairy lights working for me for this, I think. Um, mysterious animation pulsing wave and we don't want that that's not going to work for this not at all um, radial rainbow no that's very centralized and the point is is our light source isn't centralized what about swirling fog can't really see that i don't think that's really going to work with our our color schemes and how faint we want it swirling rainbow that's similar to our fairy fire um I think actually we got kind of lucky. Oh, there's Torch. I think we got kind of lucky by going with Fairy Light to start with. I quite like that with a slower animation speed. It just kind of gives this impression that uh, we've got these different sources of light. And if we just click again, click on our character to see what they can see, I think that looks quite nice. Okay, we can always come back and change it. At any point, we can come back and change this. Um, you know, no drama at all. Easy peasy to be able to do that. Uh, one thing we might be able to do, let's have a look and see if we configure this scene and we look at the lighting here. Uh, I'm wondering um, if what we should do potentially is reduce the reduce the general darkness here. Just to give the impression that this is this is a dark cave in here. What do we let's click our character again? What do we think? That's that's not done what kind of what I expected actually. I thought that would uh, now is that again? We're we're learning. We're practicing. If I reduce this to darkness, is that the was that affect the maximum level of dark that this map will get to, or is it going to keep going? 
How about that? So when we've got our character selected, look how dim this is. It's lit, they can see what they're doing, they can move around, but it gives a really good impression that this is a dimly lit cave. Our lights from our fungus now look quite bright compared to that. So I might make a, another slight change here, uh, turn down that speed a little bit more and turn down some of that intensity. Yeah, I think that's I think that's quite nice. I'm going to say that didn't uh, I didn't save it, did I? That's why. Turn down that speed and that intensity. I think that's quite nice. That's quite eerie. It's quite dark in here. It when the players are looking at it, it's going to be quite obvious that this is dimly lit. So I'm quite happy with that. I'm going to leave that in there. Uh, now the question is, if I select that light source and do a control uh, a control C and control V, does it copy? It look, it copies exactly. That's really useful. So it's exactly copied with all of those um, bits that we needed because the entire cavern is lit in the same way um, from what the module says. We might tweak it to our own preferences later, but the whole thing is lit in this way. So actually, I can put another version of that light source up here um, I can paste again put it up obviously what I could do is I could just um, instead of having multiple different light sources I could just have one big light source that covers the entire area um, so that you've got just one light source doing that I quite like the idea of doing this what I do want to be careful of just down here is I don't accidentally want my light um, to be into the cove here. Okay, so I don't want them to see these eerie lights until they actually enter the cave. So looking at this, everything is covered by light, or at least this very dim light, uh, and that should give our characters the ability to see. Look, now we can we can move around. Uh, oops, we can move around in this light, and we can see where we're going. Okay, and everything is similar in its dimly litness. I think that's light enough for players to be able to see what's going on, um, but also know that this is a dark cave. Now, the horrible thing, of course, is the fact that we've got these, these kind of circles around here, um, so of where the, the light is actually shining. Um, and it's also, apologies for that, uh, and it's also giving us this, um, this rather artificial bubble thing and at the moment the character can see everywhere so one of the things that we can do if i'm just going to come back click on lighting controls this cloud icon is going to reintroduce the fog of war um, so in theory again this character um, has no longer explored anywhere uh, we might need to look at exactly how that's going to work but the next thing i want to look at now we've got some basic lighting in that we were going to later on come back and, and potentially put in some very specific points of light. Um, we need to check to see if there's any fires here or anything like that that we can um, that we, we need to put sort of flame animations in and stuff, flickering torches or whatever it might be. But as a background, I think that's good. So the next thing we want to do is put some walls in place. So... Um, if I click on this left hand side we can go to this walls icon uh, and what we want to do is we want to put walls anywhere that the player cannot see through or walk through or hear through uh, and anywhere that there is a door. Now in this map there are no doors um, which is nice and easy. So clicking on the wall icon on the left uh, and you can see that it's set on basic walls. It's got some information there about what we need to do. And we can just click anywhere and drag out a line. That's our first wall. Okay, and we're either of these ends. We can move it if we want to, if it's not in the right place. What we can also do is hold down control, uh, which will allow us to draw a wall and then the next wall and then the next wall and then the next wall. So maybe we'll start uh, start down here near this edge here. And so I'm holding down control and it's going to do it from over there. I didn't want to do that. Okay, so I'm going to start from there. I'm holding down control now uh, and I'm just going to put some walls 
around. And you know, I'm not notice I'm not following it hugely closely to the wall because when my now I've let go of control there as it's finished doing that wall at the moment. Any of these nodes I can just um, move in if I want to and make some changes. Um, what, I, what I don't want to do is to put walls in a place where the players can't see the rock face. I don't want to be able to move through it, um, but also I, I want them to be able to see what that wall is. And that wall in this case is these rock faces. So I can go as close to the edge as I want, but um, just make sure I've left enough room for them to see uh, around there. I'm going to bring this one. No, I didn't want to bring a new one. I want to bring that one in a bit. Maybe down there. Try and join that one up there. So it's a little bit fiddly to get started, although I suspect it gets much, much quicker when you know what you're doing. You've done this a few times. So I'm going to click on that node there with control held down and I can continue drawing these. And maybe I need to be a little bit more careful and using a few more nodes to get this a little bit more uh, sort of accurate if you like. Now what you'll notice the light is changing as I'm doing this is we're putting walls in place the lights are automatically adjusting to where we've put walls in. In other words it's saying hang on a minute now suddenly there's a wall there hold down control again to carry on there we go. Um, we're automatically uh, we're putting walls in and it's automatically saying hang on a minute there's now a wall there so if we look here where it's quite bright we put these walls in place and straight away we're getting the effects of the light preventing uh, sorry the effect of the walls preventing the light from going beyond that so the inside of this big rocky bit down here is not illuminated by the fungus as it shouldn't be because there's a bloody great big rocky outcrop uh, part of the cliff in the way for that so we can get all the way down here around this corner uh, we can come straight along there I'm just going to move the map again so again to pick it up I'm going to hold down control click this first node and drag out there we go and it's allowing us with control still held down to be able to draw the rest of these now I am actually going to follow all the way around the cliff because of course we do have this sunken walkway so if they're walking along that sunken walkway whether it's day night time etc Again, I don't want them to be able to be looking inside the cliffs um, just because it's it's not right, is it? <laughs> it doesn't make sense for them to be able to see that um, and see the internal wall from the outside. So all the way down to there and that's done. So straight away, we've put some walls in, really basic, plain walls. Uh, and if we go to our character and now what they can see um, now it's still at the moment it's still showing this external bit around here but you can see the light has stopped so I'm wondering if I need to reset the fog of war for this um, because the character should there we go reset the fog of war um, because the character hasn't seen there and we can now see what this character can see around here uh, what you will notice is that they can see quite far because we haven't put a limit to the range that the, this particular actor can see. Um, so it's assuming that we can see quite a long distance. I'd have to check the rules for how far you can see in dim light. Um, and of course, what I can do is just quickly come in and say, right, on their vision, what is their range of their vision um, in this dim light? So I could do that quite easy with no problem at all, even though they haven't got any of of, of those, um, you know, some vision things on. But look over here, um, this area here, which is the larder, there is an area of the cave here that's currently hidden in blackness because it's not within visual range of this character. So even if I move much closer, you can see now, she can see vertically up this way, but she can't see what's in this area. This is now fog of war. And as the character moves, through here it reveals more and more of this chamber we've got the same up here um, so as the character moves into this room it starts to reveal what the character can now see now there's something slightly wonky here have i put a wall in the wrong place let's find out so we can walk around here and it will show us everything we need to but yeah what, what's going on there 
so I'll have to have a look at that of course that's why we test it if I go back to light um, so looking at the lights what you can see this is automatically chopping off where the walls are so any of these lights here it's going to I didn't want to create a new one stop that <laughs> um, I wanted to to grab the one that existed already um, so any of these lights here if I move it around it will show you where it will illuminate based on where those walls are so this is going to give us a really handy tip but because we've put the walls in now this light source is not illuminating this area over here uh, and this light source um, it will illuminate it um, but it wasn't quite wasn't quite over far enough to do that uh, and also it's not illuminating up here so I'm going to move um, move this one down here and then I'm going to Control C, Control V to paste another one specifically up in this area here, um, so that we've got light. So now everywhere should this light comes out as far as this. This light comes out and covers that. This light. So we've got quite a lot of overlapping light, but that's not a problem with the effects that we're using. Um, yeah, I'm not not worried about that at all. So again, pop back to our character and click on her. This is now illuminated. Uh, and if we move up here, we can see the fog of war disappearing as we move into this area, which is also illuminated. And down here is also illuminated. So that's good. So we've got some walls in place. Uh, we've got our lights sorted. Um, uh, she drifts all the way back over there. Now we have got this chunk of rock in the middle here, which at the moment is... Um, we haven't put any walls for so she can see and move she being our actor can see and move directly across that so we need to add some more walls onto this bit now we're only using really basic walls here um, so again i'm just going to go add wall hold down uh, i'm going to click to make the first one hold down control and then i can start drawing this internal wall here and you can see that slowly as we cut off the different light sources this internal area is getting darker and darker because no light can get in and then hopefully that's sorted that so again quickly pop back to our actor uh, actor can no longer see behind that let's uh, reset the fog of war so our actor can no longer see directly through this can't see through any of the walls we have to actually move around and it's nice to see our actor is spot on with our grid we have to actually move around the dungeon before we can see what's in very various areas so that's the real basics of of putting the walls in with some lighting uh, we, obviously we've got quite a lot more to do on this um, but i think that's a pretty good start it's starting to look like a uh, somewhere worth adventuring that's got some atmospherics um, we've got some lighting it's starting to feel like an actual cave that needs to be explored rather than you know just a, here's a flat map um, so yeah a bit more interesting which is great um, one last thing I want to before we end this video and it's been a little bit shorter this one um, one of the things I want to just quickly look at is when we look at these uh, these walls. So we've drawn really basic walls here. If I uh, double right click on these, you can see that we have some settings that we can change. So this currently is a normal wall that blocks movement, it blocks light, it blocks sight. So that's different. Can you see through it? Does light pass through it? They're two different things. Does it block sound? Um, and is the wall operate in both directions uh, and is it a door so we can change any of these so we could potentially have a glass wall where light and sight will pass through it but you can't move through it uh, it might be that we have like a one-way mirror so light and sight can pass through it but only from one direction so either from the left or from the right um, or we potentially can have uh, we could use it sort of like for a curtain so we could put a wall in where it's going to block light and sound uh, sorry light and sight uh, but it doesn't block sound and it doesn't block movement because obviously your characters can just push the curtain aside and of course 
we can say it's a door or a secret door as well. Now, if we said it was a door, um, just clicking this, and so we're doing this one here, it's a bit of a ridiculous place to have a door. Um, we can set whether that is that door is already opened, whether it's closed or whether it's locked. And if we wanted to, we can put a we can put a, a sound on it too. Okay, so if we update that, we now can see that that's changed color. If we go back to our actor, we can see that that's the door. So the player can click on that to open that door and to close that door and it plays our little sound. So that's really nice thing that we can add on. We don't need any doors in this, so I'm just gonna say none um, and update that to put it back to how it was. All right, so we're getting there. We have today popped in our very first actor, but not that they have any stats or anything like that at all. We have put in some mood lighting um, and made this whole thing dimmer like it was a cave and we've put in some walls so it's now an area we can actually explore. Now, some of the other maps are going to have some different challenges with doors and things like that so we'll get to play with all of those um, when we do those maps but this map is much closer to being ready to, to actually play with uh, and to invite characters to come and wander around. A uh, bit of a shorter one this one. But we've actually, we've got some really important things done. So I hope this was useful. I hope this was interesting. If you've got any tips about how to do these things more effectively, um, perhaps with the lighting, as you can see, I'm kind of fiddling around. I'm not 100% sure what the best way to do it is. You may have better ideas. Leave them in the comments. That'd be really, really useful. Um, it helps me learn. And as I learn, I can show you guys. Uh, thank you very much. Take care.